So um, I want to speak on something that I find uh, incredibly important. I think that every video I'm going to make is something I find important. It's just that um, the title is going to be called uh, Be Angry, uh, Sin Not. And I think I'm going to talk about three things, which is uh, the concept of being angry, um, sin, and righteousness. And why I think Neville breaks it down better than other teachers and why him using the scriptures is is a much better or more freeing way because I think what happens with this type of, in this type of community from what I've seen um, I was fortunate enough to get into this uh, get into the law not by any other teacher but Neville so Neville was actually the first teacher I ever read about this stuff and I was only intrigued by him because of his interpretation of the Bible. It actually had nothing to do with the law. But since I started studying him and seeing his, um, practicing his methods, um, I read about other people and I would read, um, I'm not going to name them, but I would read other teachers and there's a big emphasis on being happy, I noticed. Like, it wasn't a problem if you had an emotion that wasn't happy. Now there's nothing wrong with being happy. I know I actually know people who are, who are almost always happy. I know I'm not <laughs> always happy, um, but it's okay. And here's I can tell you why it's okay in terms of Neville's uh, teachings. So the this comes from the um, I can't even remember what. Let me see if I can even find the scripture um, because be angry and sin not comes from Paul, uh, from the letter of the um, Ephesians, and you know, this is somebody, Paul, who I think clearly knew the law, um, obviously there's some problems with the letters, if they're even his letters, and that's a whole different topic, but um, he coined the term basically, be angry, but sin not, and Neville, um, in many of his lectures, has stated that, you know, maybe there's a day where it doesn't go the way you wanted it to go. Or maybe you fell into a state uh, without even realizing it. You fell into an old pattern that you didn't even realize. Um, maybe you're angry about that. Or maybe it wasn't just the day didn't work. Maybe it could have been just been a little bit better. Um, Neville tells you to explode. <laughs> he tells you to just get it off your chest, say what you want to say say it all out don't don't um, repress or suppress these feelings um, express them and then but he says but don't sin now this is why I find Neville so freeing because it's not so much about like always riding a happy high or forcing yourself to be happy because we all know that that, that, that doesn't work I mean anybody that tells you to uh, any teacher that tells you to be happy all the time it's not gonna work um, it, it's you're going to have tons of resistance because it's just not natural. Um, if your day didn't go as planned, it didn't go as planned, and or didn't just go the way you wanted it to go. Um, so you're angry about it. Well, yeah, get it off your chest. Um, vent. Uh, maybe just maybe you don't have to vent to anybody. You can just vent to yourself. Um, but don't sin. And he basically says, don't let like the day end with you sinning. And sinning. <clears throat> has nothing to do with um, committing some immoral act. It has to do with um, right. It has to act, it's the opposite of righteousness. So to not sin is to be righteous, but to be righteous means to be in fulfillment of what you want to be. Um, so you can think of it like fulfill or sinning is basically saying I am not or I hope, or I was, or I wish I could be. It's But fulfillment, righteousness is I am. Um, I want you to see that it's actually I am is what you're seeking. That is actually what you're seeking. Um, but what happens is that many of us go into imagination and we'll say things like, I hope I will become this one day. I'm going to imagine this so I can become it one day. And I understand why we do that. Um, but I want you to see how the thinking is actually uh, just needs to be tweaked just a little bit. It doesn't need to be this um, huge, huge understanding. It just needs to be tweaked. 
and this is what it needs to be tweaked too, is that when you say like, I'm going to imagine this so I can become it, who are you speaking to when you say, I can become it, the I there? Because I want you to see that what tends to happen is we, we tend to say, I want to become this. When we say I, we mean the outer body. We mean this outer person. I want the outer person to become it. But the outer person is simply reflecting what the inner man's doing. And I want you to see that the, the one living inside of imagination is the one who wants to be freed or he wants to change himself. And his name is not I hope. It's not I was. It's I am. His name is I am. So the one within you wants to change. Everything can be said yes to this being within you because everything exists in imagination for you to have. It doesn't matter what it is. So when you are um, living in sin, you're basically living, you, you, the inner self, is living in imagination, not in fulfillment of what they want. They are living in either an I was or I did or I, I wish, but not I am. I want you to see that I am is everything you want. You want to say you want to be free from something? Know that when you say I want to be free, the I there is the one within you, the guy or the, the person within you. That's who wants to be freed. And they can be in imagination. You know, there's a... Um, speaking from personal experience, I remember um, I had a big problem with... Um, I guess you can call them intrusive thoughts, but they're really just like, um, I had this fear of just my scenes being ruined. And um, I would loop them and loop them and loop them, and then eventually they'd be ruined. But I want you to see that looping a scene is actually the same. If you loop a scene without actually feeling you are it, that's the same as a f just doing vain repetitions with your mouth. I mean, it's the same. It doesn't really do anything. You're just... Um, they call it, I think it was Joseph Murphy who called it like you're like a parrot. A parrot doesn't really understand what they're saying. They just repeat back to what they hear. And um, that's similar to what we're doing when we are just looping a scene with, no, with not feeling that we are that now. So the goal is to get to I am. Um, but I am, I, like I said, he's the one within. They're, it's the person or the, I don't know what you want to call him. It's the bodiless one within you. The voice that's the one who wants to claim what they want to claim about themselves to be true. And if you could see that, um, that when you say, I want, it's actually the inner self who's saying, I want. The I there is the inner self. It creates a huge freedom within you. Because righteousness and sinning does not depend on this world, but it depends on the one within you. Because the one out here is reflecting the one within so when I was having intrusive thoughts um, that were ruining my scenes, here's a, let's let's go to I statements. I was actually going into into my mind, me the inner self, and I was feeling and saying, I hope my scenes don't get ruined, but I was feeling fear that they would be ruined. That's an I am statement. I am afraid um, that my scenes will be ruined. But if I just change my I am to saying I am no longer afraid. And I am is fulfillment. I am is not I'm trying to be or I'm trying to get. It's I am. You never say I am in terms of I hope I can be that one day. When you claim things about yourself now and you say I am this, I am that, they're factual claims or present tense factual claims or present tense feelings that you have about yourself, about the inner self. When I say self, I mean inner self the one inside of imagination. That is the one you need to free. That is the one who is sinning, meaning he's he's not living in the in the way you want to live in imagination. You don't want to fear there anymore. Maybe you don't want to, maybe you want to feel that you can finally be what you want to be. Maybe you want to be able to finally claim I am whatever it is. Um, you don't have to live in a in a a bondage inside of imagination and if you can see that whenever you want to be free it's the inner self the inner man who wants to be free that's the one and I keep repeating this because it seems to, we seem to forget it but it's so important to see that it's the inner one who is desiring 
he's the one who wants to be fulfilled or they are the one who wants to be fulfilled it's them and it can be every time no matter what it is no matter how small of a desire it can be given so give it to yourself in imagination and when I say self I mean the inner self um, when you imagine I remove so when I imagine I remove concepts of the body and time I let go of it all and I go into imagination and I and I know that deep down what I truly want is I am and what I mean by that is I want to present tense factually feel what that I'm free and you can just feel and and when you start to actually uh, go towards the I am whatever it is you want to be you'll give uh, you'll be given a a freedom um, a certain ease to your body but don't be afraid of that that is you actually entertaining and feeling that I am you're that's you freeing the inner self and you well, you'll see that you freeing the inner self actually opens this body up it actually makes this body more uh, feel wonderful so it really is interacting with you really I should say your body really is reflecting the emotional pains that your inner self is experiencing So it's really important to see that um, it's not about forcing yourself to be happy. It's about fulfillment. It's about fulfilling your desires within yourself. That's righteousness. That's the antidote to sin. And this is so much more powerful than trying to uh, be happy. Don't try to be happy. Um, fulfill your desires and be what you want to be within the happiness will come all of that all the ease all of that will come but learn to um, exalt yourself within um, I always you know you know how there are people in this world that they live in very very um, lavish places and there's also people who live in very very uh, slumps in this world the same goes with an imagination the inner self can live in slumps it can live in this desperate desire to always want and want and want and never gets fulfillment I grew up with a deep fear that once something good happens to me it's going to be taken away from me and um, this fear really plagued me in my life and I wanted I wanted it gone but I didn't realize it was my inner self who wanted it gone and he wanted it gone inside of imagination I wanted, I actually wanted, I noticed that the thing I wanted, um, when you grow up in a way that, you know, isn't loving, I grew up in a way that was very abusive, um, you don't really desire money or objects that much, you really don't desire anything physical, what you really desire is to not be afraid anymore, you desire to feel fearless, which is to, to say you're in, you're in, you want to be in love, to be in love is to not be in fear, and, um, that's what I wanted but I didn't know that it was my inner self who wanted that my inner self wanted to stop being afraid inside of imagination my inner self wanted to feel confident that no matter what I say it happens and nothing takes it away and when I saw that it's just me taking it away from myself I was able to stop but I had to take responsibility for that it was the it was myself, my inner self, who was creating it all. I was creating my fears uh, inside of imagination, and that's actually where I wanted to be freed. And when we see that it's actually the inner self inside of imagination who wants to be freed, um, that's why Neville says to desire is to have, because when you desire something inside of imagination, you can have it. So you live in that type of fulfillment, no matter what it is. And um, I can tell you just from experience that feeling fr there's no price you can pay on feeling free and feeling unafraid or feeling like the thing that has been frustrating you inside your mind is gone. I mean, it's priceless. And you can have that because anything can be given. The imagination, here's something I learned as well, was that not only was I creating the feeling that it will be taken away from me or something will be ruined and I was doing that all the imagination never takes it only gives I'm going to say that again the imagination never takes it only gives it's 
only giving. It always says yes. It never takes anything from you. It can't because it's all all things exist within it. So you can go into a dream where things are being taken from you, but you can, the, the dream of things being given to you also exists. It gives you all things, everything. You 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 know it's up to you to choose. But I want to read an excerpt from uh, this lecture. Uh, it's called uh, "You Find Jesus Christ as Yourself" in 1966 lecture from Neville, and he says this: "Be angry." The day didn't go as you wanted it to go. Be angry, but sin not. Sinning is missing the mark. Don't let your anger go with you into the deep of sleep. Don't stop. Be angry. Get it off your chest. At that moment, having blown your top, as it were, now don't sin. Sinning is missing the mark. So you have an objective, a goal, now commune with your own heart on your bed and be still and be silent. And now you're told what to do. Bring the right sacrifice. The word translated right in the King James Version is the sacrifice of righteousness. Righteousness is right thinking. Forget now, having blown my top, and then start the right thinking. And commune and say, I want. Now don't now, what I didn't get today, what I want. Now, the opposition to what I want, I wanted. What I want. <laughs> that look, talk so interesting. Then, as I commune with myself, reach the point of being thankful. Thank you. And then we are told, trust in the Lord. Bring the sacrifice of righteousness and trust in the Lord. Just go to bed that way and see how it works. The whole thing works quickly. Don't postpone it, and don't try to aid it. It's all within you. And the rearranged structure here, in here, rearranges it there, out there. It's only a reflection. It's only a response. So let no one say to you or convince you that because of your background or your limitations of birth that you are stuck. Apologies for that. No one is stuck save he who sticks himself. Now notice the importance of forget that you even blow, you know, maybe you blew your top and you went angry, but he says forget that. Now be who you want to be in imagination. Don't sin. Don't postpone it. You want to claim I am and feel what I am means to you. I am is the most important word you can say. It's a factual feeling, present tense about yourself. It's not something you're going to become. That is changing the self because the self's name is I am, the inner self. So you say I am free. Really feel what that feels like. Free the inner self and exalt them and continuously reach in higher and higher states. But don't postpone it. Maybe you had a bad day. He says to blow your top off. Get it off your chest and then forget you even said any of those words and commune with yourself and grant yourself everything you want. So you, you will naturally... Um, I, I dislike gratitude work. I don't like it. I don't like, it's the same thing to me as forcing yourself to be happy. It's forcing yourself to be thankful. These aren't forcing. Once you fulfill things within yourself you will naturally feel gratitude. It's just a natural response. You just can't help it. You feel so thankful that you're free. It's that simple. You can't help but think imagination for how giving it is. So don't postpone it. I'm going to repeat this last sentence. No one is stuck save he sticks himself. <laughs>